What does it take to start a company? <laughs> You have to be gutsy, you have to be a risk taker. You have to be risk prone to start a business. That's for sure. You're not doing it to get money, to get famous. You're like, that's the only single option left if I want to solve that problem. You bring an interesting point. What does it take to start a company? First, you need to scratch your own itch. Yeah, yeah I like that one. <laughs> you know, you're going to do something because you saw a problem or you're dealing with a problem and you want to fix it. Because it's probably one of the only ways to have the passion required to start a business. You're going to have to put untold hours you're gonna have to work very hard for very little recognition. The only thing you're gonna have to run on is gonna be your passion. And that's it, that's all. Si t'as pas vécu cette situation-là toi-même, ça marche pas. Euh, J'ai vu tellement de gens arriver en disant Écoute, c'est une super bonne idée là d'entreprise. Faire tel, 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 tel truc, on va faire plein d'argent, ça va super marcher, tout le monde va aimer ça. Puis je suis comme, est-ce que toi-même tu l'utiliserais à la base Ah, oh, ben là, pas, moi je suis pas vraiment là, ouais, ça part mal. Execution trumps the idea any day. You could have honestly a really stupid idea, but if you execute it well, that's all that matters. And to be honest with you, every idea is stupid until it works. And the reality is this, if you do something new, you don't know if it works yet. But the idea is not that important. That's, that's the The purpose. idea is not important, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe we should start that way. You don't need an idea really that much. You start a company to solve a problem, to bring something that doesn't exist, and you start from it and eventually it will lead you somewhere else. But what you build on the way, the team, uh, the brand recognition, the expertise, everything, this is what makes the company what it is mm -hmm. in the long run, not the idea itself. And actually, I'll, I'll develop a bit on this. Pio mentions the team. You don't need a team to start a company. However, uh, fast it will become something incredibly important to secure. You cannot build anything worthwhile by yourself completely alone. You could build something small, something even moderate and reasonable, but if you want to build something of the size of the ambition that you really have, you're going to need some people around you. And most importantly, you need to find people that not only are competent, but are as passionate as you, because they will be called to sacrifice a lot as well at the start of the company. You know, um, the team is incredibly important. And most importantly too about the team is there's no one superstar. I hate the premise of the superstar CEO. It's the new thing now. The whole superstar CEO that like you can put a amazing badass CEO to at the head of a company and the company will magically go better. That's a myth. It's just because we have this obsession with, with you know, gl glamorizing, I guess, one person to put the success of a whole entity upon the back of one person, but that's not true. Uh, take any incredibly successful entrepreneur, whether it be Elon Musk or, or Mark Zuckerberg, and the reality is if you look behind the veil, if you lift a whole corporate veil behind it, you'll realize that there are hundreds, if not thousands of people who have all contributed, some more than others, but regardless, they would have never been who they are without them. And I think it's super important to demystify. There's no such thing as an all-star. It's you need an all-star team, or you're not going to go very far. No. The second question: What does it take to be an entrepreneur? It's not glamorous. It's it's all guts, no glory. And the problem is that today's media, they all look at successful people and they say, this is the lifestyle you can have and can, and can achieve if you're an entrepreneur. But the reality is, you're looking at a one survivor who made it. There's a million others who did it. Je renforce ça en plus en disant non seulement on fait juste parler de ceux qui sont successful, mais en plus dès qu'il y en a un qui était successful puis qu'il l'est plus, on se met à dire non mais lui c'est pas un vrai entrepreneur. Lui il est pas parmi nous. Dès qu'un entrepreneur fail quelque part, t'as toute les, la communauté mais qui est comme non mais lui c'est pas un vrai entrepreneur. Alors qu'au contraire, parmi les entrepreneurs, tout le monde est comme ah oh ouais, moi aussi j'ai vécu ça. C'est ça qui est, qui est fascinant quand tu, quand tu te promènes et quand tu parles juste avec des gens qui ont parti des business. C'est le nombre de fois que les gens parlent d'échecs puis de quand, quand je me suis pété la gueule en faisant telle affaire ou quand je pensais faire tel truc puis que ça a été un désastre complet. Puis, euh, puis c'est de ça que ça parle entre eux alors que quand tu parles d'entrepreneurs, dans des gens qui sont pas, à des gens qui sont pas entrepreneurs, sont comme ça parle, ça parle que de succès, ça parle que de trucs qui réussissent. Fait que je pense que. Qu'est-ce que ça prend pour être un entrepreneur? Faut que t'aimes avoir des échecs. Faut que t'aimes perdre. Damn right, Anand Master. That's a good point you're raising. It's you have to be a good entrepreneur. You have to enjoy failure. It sounds a little odd to say. It sounds counterproductive, but you have to enjoy the process of failing because to succeed, you're gonna have to fail probably like a thousand times. And you can't one let anything be taken personal. 
uh, you have to have really thick skin. Uh, most people are going to want to see you fail to begin with because people are jealous. That's just a reality, human nature. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of encouragement. And when you're going to start, you're going to hit yourself against a million walls. It's going to not work. Your first hypothesis ain't going to work. Uh, your first business plan is going to go to shit. So you <laughs> need to learn to fail a lot. You need to learn to adapt from your failure. So you need to be able to absorb the experience and the knowledge that you've, uh, the feedback effectively that you've had, and then you need to adapt. But yes, you need to learn to fail. You need to embrace failure as a matter of fact, if you want to be an entrepreneur. Moi, c'est ma deuxième expérience entrepreneur. En effet. Puis la différence, c'est que la, la première expérience, c'est une entreprise qui était déjà existante. Dans ce cas-ci, on démarre une entreprise. Tout à fait. Puis moi, je dirais, euh, Pierre, il faut y croire de façon démesurée. Si on parlait tantôt d'avoir un concept innovateur, innovant, bien, il faut y croire de façon dé démesurée. Pourquoi? Parce qu'on rencontre plus de gens qui veulent te décourager sur ton concept que de, mm -hmm. de gens qui veulent ou qui prennent le temps de comprendre ton concept. Il faut de la résilience. Puis là, je suis allé voir, Pierre, dans le dictionnaire, là, pour être sûr, j'utilisais le bon thème « résilience ». Ça a un côté psychologique, je trouvais que ça résumait bien le côté entrepreneur. Capacité à surmonter des chocs traumatiques. Oui. Ah, Pierre, tu es entrepreneur, je me trompe ou pas? Non, tu as raison. Et puis des <rire> chocs traumatiques, on en vient tous les matins quand on ouvre la porte du bureau. <rire> c'est la persévérance, je pense, qui fait la différence. Pour les raisons que tu viens d'établir, en fait, c'est que tout le, monde, tout le monde que tu vas rencontrer sur le marché va te trouver une objection, va trouver un défaut, va trouver une raison pour laquelle ça va On devrait le faire différemment, on devrait le faire... Ils vont t'amener à gauche, alors ah ouais, ça va Il faut être ouvert d'esprit, ouais. évidemment, il faut comprendre et puis prendre ce qui est important, mais il ne faut pas déroger par contre de la, la tangente sur laquelle on était parti déjà d'emblée, parce que l'idée initiale, l'idée originale provient de nous, et euh, on, on a fait notre vigie, on a fait notre étude de marché, on sait où on s'en va. On le fait au quotidien avec nous. Et on le fait tous les jours, effectivement. Donc oui, c'est important d'en de, prendre, mais d'en laisser également. Mais il est certain que, euh, comme tu le vis à tous les jours, tu le vis, on le vit à tous les jours, euh, tout le monde a son idée, euh, comme on dit, tout le monde a son opinion. Euh, il faut donc savoir dissocier finalement les bonnes idées des mauvaises par rapport à notre, notre plan de match. Puis on a la chance euh, de faire partie d'un écosystème de jeunes qui ont quand même des bonnes idées. Hein. Euh, je pense qu'on qu a une direction actuellement qui, qui est... Euh, qui est dirigé avec une vision qui, euh, auquel on souscrit. Il ouais. euh, faut donc s'assurer euh, qu'on ne déroge pas trop tout en s'adaptant. Now, what do we see? What do you see business in five years? Well, that's a good one. What do you see in five years? Mais moi, je vais répondre à mon premier truc. On disait où est-ce que tu vois business biz dans cinq ans Je ne sais pas dans six mois. Yeah, that's true. Fait que dans cinq ans, ça commence à être far. Ah, to be honest, I don't even know where it's going to be in five days. Everything changes every day, so I have no idea. I think BizBiz Biz has a lot to offer to businesses. I think it's a great idea, great concept. I don't think anyone has thought of this. I mean, it's been thought of in other in other sectors, maybe like Uber or Airbnb, but, but never brought to a business world. It's a one-stop shop for everything a business may need. And for that reason, I think, I think we'll go pretty far. I think it should end up something extremely widespread. So where do I see BizBiz Biz in five years? Definitely on the moon. We're gonna have a moon office. Uh, you know, dominating the world, buying Amazon, having our own moon base. Grandiose plans. That's what Tim said. <laughs> There you go, we're on the same page. We all know where this is heading. Clearly a moon base is the only solution. Right now we say we are the largest business resource in Canada. We will be the largest business resource in the world. It's really that simple. Uh, there's some competitors coming our way that's only going to make us move faster, be better, be smarter, and that's what we're doing. We'll be international, no question, in five years, and the leader, like Airbnb is a leader, will be the leader. Uh, in five years from now, I could see us uh, being international in many different countries, having uh, different operations around the world, and having a large pool of companies using our services and hopefully having other tools that we could offer them also mm -hmm. so that uh, we become one of the big players in the game. In a perfect scenario, what do you see business in five years? In a perfect scenario? There's no such thing as a perfect scenario. That's I true. don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say this, okay? In an optimal world in five years, where is BizBiz? 
Well, one, implemented across the United States of America. That's a huge thing. You know, I want to be in the US, a huge market. So, business in five years is going to be like any other business in five years. So, they're going to be in the clouds or it's going to be on the ground. Now, if people realize the product that we have, it's going to be in the sky. Because it just makes sense. Why hustle your life talking with different businesses, going to different people, negotiating with a bunch of individuals, when you can do everything in one spot? But if everything goes together, and everybody acknowledges what we have, it's gonna be in the clouds. Si me demande moi où je le vois dans cinq ans, certainement qu'on devrait devenir un standard de l'industrie, un standard d'entreprise, et de façon globale. Je pense que Euh, la façon dont on s'aligne actuellement avec la technologie, avec tous les ajouts que l'on fait sur, euh, euh, sur notre plateforme BizBiz, avec euh, l'encadrement du CMN au niveau du développement d'affaires, au niveau euh, stratégique, euh, on devrait être en mesure de s'implanter et de devenir la référence. Je, je, je vois BizBiz comme étant un benchmark dans son, mmh, dans son domaine, un incontournable, une, une, une entreprise qui a reçu révolutionné Les, euh, la façon d'opérer une entreprise avec, un, avec un, des outils modernes, avec euh, des idées modernes, avec un, un esprit de, de collaboration entre entreprises. Je pense qu'on va être l'entreprise qui va avoir révolutionné, qui va, qui va être capable d'amener aux entrepreneurs des, des nouvelles façons d'optimiser de, de, euh, leur, leur business. Number two, I want to see BizBiz fighting to capture the market from another competitor. And it's to sound a little counterproductive, but right now we're pretty much the only person on the market. And I don't like that. I want to have a competitor. I want to have that competition, that that, that spirit, uh, a little bit like a, a Uber and Lyft. So no, I, I want someone to compete us and I want both of our companies to really use that competition to innovate, to grow faster and to offer the best services possible for businesses. We're Pepsi and Coke. Like. Pepsi and Coke. Coke. Yes, or Apple and Microsoft. Which are you for you? Pepsi or Coke? We don't know. <laughs> we, need, we need the other one to there finish defining ourselves. Right now we're just a mutant of Coke and Pepsi. Yeah. But that's not good. Because what, what's important is not to become the president's on, on choice on, of cola. On, 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 oh. on, 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 only the no name cola right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you don't become that. Very good. Very good. Hey, honestly, that was good. So if, if the Vieux Couton do the same thing, you're going to have a wonderful video. <laughs>